This month, we're continuing to highlight many of the investigations that Scott Kelly conducted as part of the one-year mission. And today, we're looking at one called the Reaction Self-Test, where astronauts take a five-minute test to see how different factors, including fatigue, can affect their job performance. It's a similar problem for folks here on Earth, like airline pilots, truck drivers, and shift workers, who may work up to 16 hours per day, or more than six consecutive days without a day off of rest. My colleague Lori Meggs caught up with the principal investigator of this experiment to learn more. Well, we've been trying to understand with a particular focus on are they sleeping, how much are they sleeping, what's the quality of that sleep, what is their workload like from their own perception, uh, and what are their moods like, um, ranging from how fatigued are they to um, uh, uh, what's the quality of their sleep to uh, what's their physical exhaustion to what's their stress like. Uh, and we're trying to under and their tiredness, sleepiness, we're trying to understand what they're experiencing and particularly as it relates to sleep-wake patterns in space flight and then workload as well, which is another kind of fatigue, right, if you work too hard or too long, in addition to not getting enough sleep. And then what that looks like as they go through the mission. We're actually studying them well before the mission, right up to the mission and the launch, then throughout the mission, and then we study them again for another month after the mission. So how does that translate to us here on Earth and our sleep habits? and? what you're learning, is that going to help us? Well, so this is an area where I'm particularly fortunate because everyone can relate to excessive work, inadequate sleep, poor sleep quality, feeling fatigued or stress. So it's got a lot of translation to Earth. Uh, we're learning a lot about what happens dynamically over time because we get to study them for the full mission before, during, and after. But it, we're using tools that we know are sensitive on Earth to schedules that are too difficult or challenging, whether they're the schedules of physicians in training or truck drivers or airline pilots. So these tools uh, generalize nicely to data that we have from populations on Earth that are also generally populations that are engaged in what we call sensitive, safety sensitive work. That is to say, if, you, if you're not alert and able to fly an airplane or drive a truck or treat a patient, et cetera, or, uh, whether a nurse or a doctor, then there's a risk. And astronauts are in the same situation. They're in a risky environment, even more so than these other occupations, and it's 24-7. So they, we need to know how capable are they, how tired do they get, because when you get tired, when the day's too long, the sleep's too short, the quality of sleep's too poor, uh, and there's emergencies going on you're trying to deal with, at some point there's a cumulative effect on you, an exhaustion effect, a stress effect. Even if you motivate yourself to keep performing, it's very hard to ensure that you're always going to be fit and capable. So what do we do about it from the well, that's, what you've first, learned? First we need to detect it, and that was really the point of the study. Part of what NASA's interested in is whether this software on these computers can be used periodically by the flight docs to just check an astronaut. In the study, we actually have to ask the astronauts to do it every four days, so we get the database of normative data that we need to be able to judge uh, what's normal in space and what isn't, and what the relationships are. So if the sleep's getting shorter in space, down six hours or less, five hours or four a night, then we ought to see changes on the psychomotor vigilance attention task, and we do. And we see that on Earth, and now we've seen it in space. So the point is that we're, we're showing that the same phenomena are present in space flight, but then there are additional phenomena uh, that are occurring in space flight, and we'd love to know more about how those are influencing the overall fatigue, alertness, performance matrix. So part of your study, you actually get to go beyond six months, one year. That's true, and uh, the opportunity for, uh, to be able to study uh, both a, an American astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut in the one-year study was extremely important for the measures we were taking. We're, we're very much interested in understanding the dynamics of behavior as things get longer, and most people on Earth can relate to this. You know, it's one thing when your job is very challenging and you've got a goal in mind and you're, everybody at the workplace is working for the goal and at the end of the month it's done. It's quite another when the goal keeps getting pushed back and it, you know, the pace of work can vary greatly and is often very high tempo and there's unpredictability in what will happen. And those sorts of things 
occur in space flight. So, you know, a piece of equipment will break or there has to be a spacewalk or suddenly they change the operations. You got to do a slam shift now and you didn't have to yesterday and you hadn't prepared for that. And, and so there are these unexpected things that occur in space flight and it's important to be able to look at what that's like when they get out even longer. And then just time itself. Time spent in space. Are they having more and more difficulty sleeping? Are they having more and more difficulty, you know, regulating mood or their feelings? Uh, do they feel the workloads escalating? Are their stress levels as they report them going up or down? So it was an important opportunity, and then their cognitive functions, to just confirm. Even, even if it turned out we found absolutely no change, that would be hugely valuable. In this area, it's a sensitive area we study. We're talking about the brain and behavior and moods and all that private stuff, stress, that most of us would prefer to keep quiet or between us and our friends or our spouse, uh, but it is an essential thing to know it in the astronauts, and God bless them, they've been very good about giving us that data.